Well, the issue of trying to meet this goal by 2020 is it's one of those big, hairy, audacious goals that people put out there. I think if you get everybody's attention focused on it, if you get multilateral lending institutions, you get NGOs, you get governments and the corporate sector focused on it, it gives you a better chance to get there. I'm not sure it can be done. We're only going to know as the years go by, but I think the energy and the enthusiasm for getting to a solution certainly exists. The momentum's there. Now is the time because of technology and because of the interest of the private sector. We set aspirational goals to rally behind and I think it's almost um, it's almost besides the point whether it's a realistic goal or not. In fact if it's realistic it's probably not very aspirational. Once the systems can be set up that use the infrastructure that's already there to unlock financial inclusion there'll be big step changes in in, uh, in, in welfare that come from that. Will it happen in Six years' time, I don't know, that's an audacious goal, but why not try? The exciting thing for me is the fact there are now six billion mobile phones out there in the world, and, and many of those are, are in the hands of customers that were previously invisible to us as service providers. But, but now we can see them, and we're, increasingly we can do a transaction with them on that phone, and, and for me that's a, a great opportunity to think about relevant products and services uh, which, which will meet their day-to-day -day needs. You find, at least in Ghana, and I'm sure the same in India and everywhere, very decent, very hard-working, very determined people who just don't have a chance in life um, because they just don't have access to financial products and services. And with a bit of help, many of them can help themselves and are willing and very determined to help themselves. You know, maybe the reason we, we chose such an ambitious goal as 2020 was the belief that a lot of what's being rolled out today or introduced is enabled by technologies that could go exponentially. They can expand exponentially. We've seen that in the mobile, you know, the, the pervasiveness of mobile handsets. I'm pretty very much satisfied to, te to see the DRC having 8% great growth rate, which is great. But at the bottom of the pyramid, the little guy, the little woman, does not see anything, does not feel anything. So I thought that with the financial inclusion, you know, we could probably find a way to make a difference for those small guys. The people who have been excluded from financial services will now be playing, they will, they will be participating in the market. And um, I think this, this, this is good for everybody. Providers win, they get more business, banks get more business. In fact, more money comes into the, the banking system. The, the, the benefits are enormous. What access to financial system gives is opportunity. Opportunity to increase their incomes, opportunity to smooth their incomes, and insurance against uh, illness, death in the family. Um, so, what is it going to do is improve the quality of life of poor people. And that's going to be a very big, big transformational change. Um, I think if we achieve the 2020 goal, the, the world will be different in the sense that people will have more financial security. Uh, the insurance element, for example, means that if they um, lose their physical assets, they can replace them. So there'll be a, a financial stability in that community. But also from that foundation, you'll see the future middle class emerge. I think there's a real will in the in the industry now, not just the mobile money providers, but the regulators, the banking infrastructure, the NGOs, everybody's beginning to understand how, how much potential these new mobile financial services and, and other technology products, just how incredibly empowering and productive they can be. And I think it's, it's just starting to come together that everybody's focused in the same direction at last.